So what I've got on the bench today then is a uh, kit for a uh, frequency counter and a uh, power meter up to 5.8 gigahertz. Now I was actually searching around for a new power meter because uh, my power meter is quite old, it's uh, 1972 vintage and uh, it's just got an analogue needle so I do want to actually uh, test a few uh, different adapters here on the bench and using something as old as that you can't really get it to show up properly on uh, camera so I was uh, looking around for a uh, digital power meter and I came across this kit from uh, Azcel Electronic in Germany now I'm presuming that's how you actually uh, pronounce it whether it's Acel or Acel Electronic I don't know but uh, everything in this kit I've had a quick look even the uh, power adapter which I uh, didn't order is actually made in Germany so I'm hoping it'll be uh, a good quality little kit now what's really nice about this kit it actually starts at around £50 for the uh, base model but uh, you can actually upgrade and uh, add different modules as uh, money becomes available or uh, your needs actually change so it uh, looks quite good on paper so I've got it here so I thought we'll actually uh, assemble this on the bench and then do a couple of experiments at the end just to test it out so the kits come to me in this box here as you can see I've got a uh, actual printed off paper manual which uh, is quite a rarity nowadays so it goes through the uh, function of the meter itself how to use it and it also has uh, instructions on uh, how to actually assemble this I, uh, I've got a European uh, power adapter here now I didn't actually order this so uh, I don't know what it's doing in with this delivery but um, I think it cost an extra five pounds now because I'm in the UK this actual plug suck it's no uh, good to me without an adapter but I have got quite a few of these adapters so I won't be using this one but I can tell you but uh, going by the weight of this it does feel like a uh, quality adapter so if you can actually use this in your country then uh, I think for around a fiver it's well worth getting this because uh, weight is normally a uh, good indicator of how well a uh, power adapter is going to be so as I say you can actually start off with just the uh, basic motherboard for this unit even the uh, case itself you don't have to buy that uh, is again a option I can't exactly remember how much it costs but uh, you can even provide your own case and uh, we get some software here because I've got the USB version of this so I can plug it into my laptop and control it from the interface there on the laptop so uh, let's get it all out and we'll take a look and I'll start assembling this and like I say at the end we'll uh, put it through its paces and give it a test so I've got all the parts on the bench here and there's not a great deal to it I've got the main motherboard here and uh, there's various uh, resistors capacitors and switches the uh, ICs are here at the top but uh, one thing I probably will change later on is uh, this BNC connector I'll uh, probably change that to a uh, SMA uh, PCB mount if I can find one or uh, something similar I just don't like this uh, BNC connector especially when I'll be using this for the uh, microwave frequencies more often than not now I don't intend to draw this video out actually uh, showing me soldering on each resistor and each capacitor etc but uh, what I'm going to do is uh, remove the motherboard and start building it up and uh, any little uh, niggles I've got with it along the way or any problems then uh, I'll stop and I'll uh, highlight those as we actually go along now although this is a kit it's not uh, something like uh, solder by numbers kind of kit it's not all laid out uh, with images on the silk screen for instance but uh, you've still got uh, the different uh, numbers here for the uh, components that actually solder in place and uh, using the manual at the side you can easily work out where everything goes now I'm going to put this together how I normally actually uh, start off doing something like this and something that I like to do is put all the resistors in first so that is what I'm going to do I'm going to solder in all the resistors to this board and then uh, when I've done that I'll move on to the capacitors that's just the way I like to work uh, some people like to start say on this end of the board and just systematically work their way across for instance but uh, that's just a uh, personal preference now as I said this is not a solder by numbers kit so you're expected to read the values of the bands 
on the resistors themselves so my, the best advice that I can actually give you when doing something like this is uh, take the time half an hour or so to actually read all the uh, bands on the resistors and label them all what they actually are and place them you don't have to uh, place them on something like this but this is my little turntable but uh, just to do that it'll just save you a lot of time when you actually come to actually uh, assembling the kit and uh, you're less likely to make mistakes as well so taking a little bit of time and labeling them all pre-soldering it uh, just works out a lot better in my experience now because of space restrictions on this board you have to mount the resistors in an upright position but uh, because I've also sorted out all my components prior to me actually doing this I just cross reference the uh, component placement diagram here with the bill of materials and it just makes the construction a lot quicker so now that I've got all the resistors in place I've got most of the components out of the way the resistors make up uh, the majority of the components so now I'm going to go ahead and put all the capacitors in place so now that all the capacitors are in place we're on the home stretch of this little board now so I'm going to go around and uh, pop the diodes in there's a voltage regulator to go in as well a uh, large crystal in that position there and then uh, the ICs and finally all the uh, switches and uh, connectors so I've just about finished populating this side of the board I've just got the two pin headers here to solder into these two positions just so I can uh, connect the modules up and uh, if we flip it over this side of the board contains uh, all the BNC connectors and the switches etc and here's the header for the uh, LCD so I'm now getting ready to uh, solder on and mount the uh, little LCD screen that comes with the kit now you get given these little uh, risers here so I've installed those directly onto the PCB so I'm going to be soldering the uh, LCD screen in place and it just sits on top of those risers and I've got some little screws here to hold it down and I just want to point out this uh, LCD screen is a really tight fit it sits on top of the BNC connector there and you've got to get all the uh, pins lined up to come through these holes so you can solder it in place but uh, the last few say five or six pins on here are not quite lining up because I can't push uh, down any further that LCD screen because of the BNC connector so uh, what I'm doing I've got a spudger here and I'm very gently bending outwards the last few pins here so I can actually get them lined up in that LCD screen so now that I've bent the pins it actually fits in quite nicely it's just a tight fit sitting on top of that BNC connector there so if you're struggling a little bit trying to get this LCD board in just bend them a little bit I wouldn't try and solder this uh, header on first because you probably wouldn't get the height correct so it's just a tight fit on top of that BNC connector but just bend your pins very carefully and it fits no problem at all so I'm now starting to prep the case to actually mount everything inside the case but uh, the instruction manual and manual don't uh, really show in any great detail what you have to do here so uh, what I've done I've uh, got the switch the power on and off switch here and I've got the uh, DC jack and I've mounted those on the back I've already soldered some wire to the uh, DC jack so I've got the ground wire coming off here I'm going to have the uh, positive wire actually soldered onto the switch and another positive wire coming out from that so we can turn it on and off but uh, it's not quite clear what this little uh, phono jack is for I'm uh, not sure where this is supposed to connect to now if this is um, some kind of option that I didn't add I don't know uh, you, you definitely would not use a phono jack for something that's uh, high frequency so uh, possibly it's some kind of option that I haven't uh, actually uh, decided to include with this kit so at the moment I'm just leaving that to one side and also you get these uh, little extension pieces here now these are for these uh, tactile switches they're quite long but uh, they're not long enough to actually protrude through the uh, front plate of the uh, box itself so I'm presuming these little uh, extension pieces go on to the uh, tactile switches to make them longer so they then protrude through the uh, front cover here but again that doesn't actually uh, tell you in the uh, instruction manual 
Now although I got the power adapter I didn't actually click on that but uh, you get it with uh, bare wire so you have to solder your own little jack plug onto the end of there but I'm going to look through my box of uh, wall warts and I'll choose an appropriate one so I probably won't use this probably put it to one side and possibly use it in something else. And these are the two main modules that do all the work, the power meter and the frequency counter. And uh, as I said at the beginning, you don't have to buy everything all at once. You can buy the basic kit because these are just connected to these pin headers here. So these modules aren't actually soldered in place. Now this is the main crystal here, the time base. And originally I uh, clicked on the uh, advanced time base, the uh, upgraded one that uh, is a little bit quicker and a little bit more accurate but uh, because uh, then I went on to actually put the order in again but this time in euros because it was slightly cheaper for me I uh, forgot to click on that so I probably will order that separately and uh, remove this crystal and uh, put the uh, quicker time base in there so it's definitely something that you could uh, purchase and upgrade as you go along the uh, main chip here is in its own uh, socket so that can actually be pulled out of there so whether they uh, plan on doing uh, different revisions of this chip adding more um, capabilities to this unit then uh, you could probably easily purchase that uh, chip separately and uh, pull this one and uh, swap it over now one thing that does concern me slightly is this little voltage regulator here has no heat sink attached to it now yeah, if this was a metal case I'd probably attach it to the uh, wall of the case itself and extend the pins there the legs on it with some uh, wires but uh, I'll keep an eye on it if it does start to get too hot I'll uh, add it's uh, li a little heat sink to that I've got uh, plenty of those in my uh, scrap bin so it's just something to keep an eye on now I've already powered the unit on once and uh, all I've got is these blocks across the main LCD here as you can see so I have uh, reopened it up again and gone through all my uh, soldering points and uh, checked it with the schematic and uh, everything seems right now these two buttons don't do anything but when I press the channel button it goes into uh, firmware update mode so I think there's probably something wrong with the main IC chip so I'll have to get onto the uh, actual manufacturers of this and see what they actually say so I emailed the manufacturers of this little unit they uh, asked me to do a few tests to uh, check the voltages of the pins while it was actually attached to the main board in here and then uh, check the voltages again with the actual pin removed and uh, they seem to think uh, like I thought it was a uh, corrupt IC so they've sent me this new one it only took three days to come to the UK so I'm going to swap this one out with the uh, corrupt one and then hopefully fingers crossed that'll sort it out and it should work just fine so I've installed a new chip again I'm just powering it off my bench power supply here so uh, fingers crossed with the new chip it's all going to be fine now and it seems to be going through its boot cycle there so it seems that it was a, a bad chip with some uh, bad firmware on there so now it's all sorted. So what I'm going to do then, I'm going to actually leave this video here and I'm going to do a uh, part 2 because I want to have a uh, proper read through this manual and I also need to calibrate this and uh, apparently according to the manual there's two ways of actually calibrating it, one using a multimeter and uh, one using an oscilloscope and the preferred method is to use an oscilloscope because it says it's more uh, a much more accurate way to actually calibrate this. So uh, I want to look at that and see, uh, I'll calibrate it first with a multimeter, take some readings and then cal it again with the uh, oscilloscope and see if there is any uh, major difference there because not everybody has access to uh, an oscilloscope. And I have a few more videos in mind with some other kits that uh, I'm going to be ordering and uh, let me know as well if uh, I showed enough information in this video I uh, don't really see the need to actually uh, you know video myself soldering every single resistor in place and speeding it up on the uh, end video I don't really see the benefit of that at all but if you want to I uh, made to actually do that then fine I, uh, I don't mind doing that but uh, you know did I show all the uh, necessary 
bits of information in constructing this you know if you went to buy this kit and you had the manual there and uh, you looked at my video did I include enough information there do you think or should I have, I have uh, included a bit more detail I don't know because uh, I've never really done a video like this before so again i uh, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you've got any comments or suggestions like i say uh, the amount of content you want me to show in a video like this then uh, you know let me know and if you did enjoy it please give it a thumbs up and uh, i'll definitely be doing a uh, part two on this with some experiments just to see uh, how well it actually uh, works you know it is a cheap little uh, frequency counter and power meter you know it's around the uh, 100 120 pounds mark so uh, you know i'm hoping that uh, this does the job and uh, we can do some uh, interesting experiments and test future products using this as well so again i uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one